Children's Museum of Cleveland, and today I have three books inspired by the Chinese culture that we are going to read today. Are you ready? Here we go. Our first one is called Dragon Dance, a Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year is a holiday that lasts 15 days. It begins at the first of the lunar New Year in January or February. Kids and their families celebrate with fireworks and parades. A big feast is usually eaten on New Year's Eve. We shop for fresh fish and plum blossoms here. We buy to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Whoops, sorry. We sweep, mop, and dust the old year away. We decorate our home for the holiday. Good luck and good fortune. Happy New Year. Red dresses, red shirts, red envelopes too. Red brings good luck to me and to you. Thank you. We all share a feast. There's duck, crab, and pork. Dad eats with chopsticks. I use my fork. When we eat, the noodles last. We hurry to watch the parade on the street. Jugglers toss balls. Lions dance to a beat. Wow, look at that juggler throw. Something is coming. We all try to see. It's a long red and golden. What could it be? It's the dragon. We wish you a new year full of peace, luck, and joy. Happy Chinese New Year. Gong Hei Fat Choi. The end. Okay, my friends, that was the end of our first book. And now our second book, which is called Round as a Mooncake. Round as a mooncake, round as the moon, round as the lanterns outside of my room. Round as a pebble that I found, a bowl of goldfish that makes no sound. Round are the rice bowls in our house, round are the eyes of my curious mouse. Round is the bowl that spins and twirls and happy faces of that boy and girl. Round are the cups of jasmine tea at a table beneath a tree. Square is the checkerboard in the park. Square is my name, Chops Inky Mark. Square are tofu and radish cakes. Square are the streets that the bakery makes. Square is the box that pizza comes in and dim sums made by Mrs. Chin. Square is the basket where kittens sleep. Square is a box full of secrets I keep. Square is a window with a view. Square is my room and my family's house too. Rectangles are ink stones, paintbrush racks, and a mobile phone. Popo's favorite Chinese lace is a very special pencil case. Rectangles are sacks of rice. An abacus to tell the price. A puppet stage and a homemade ticket. Rectangles are home for crickets. Lucky money on a tree. Envelopes for you and me. Rectangles are books for fun. A bed to sleep in when the day is done. The end. And so, my friends, we have one last story, and it is called Grandfather Counts. Gong 
Gong grandfather was one of the last people off the plane. He walked slowly towards the crowd, waiting at the terminal. Baba, Baba, Mama shouted. His eyes lit up when he looked in our direction. Mom ran over and hugged him. Dad, Henry, Cece, and I stood back waiting. Finally, I went closer. Gong Gong patted my head and smiled and then said something to me. I looked at Mom for help. Gong Gong says you look very nice, Mom explained. Thank you, I said. Gong Gong kept talking to me in Chinese. When, I realized, when he realized I didn't understand, he turned to Mom and, with a look of surprise on his face. I wanted to explain that Mom had tried to teach us Chinese. She'd gotten us Chinese flashcards with words and pictures. Once, she sent us to Sunday school, but we didn't want to go back. The kids already spoke Chinese. They were learning to write characters and we couldn't understand what they said. On the way home, everyone was quiet. Gong Gong dozed next to me. I watched him and wondered what he was dreaming. Did he dream in Chinese? When we went home, mom took Gong Gong to his room and shut the door. He's tired, she said, let him rest. It had been my room. A small back room, just big enough for a bed and a small desk. From the window, I could see the railroad tracks that ran along the house to the place where I could only imagine. To get ready for Gong Gong's arrival, we had moved my bed into Cece's room. Her room had faced the street. No tracks, no train cars to count as they sped by. We put up wallpaper in my room, green with small dots. Mom said it would help hide the cracks caused by the rumbling of the trains going by. I miss those cracks, all connected and spreading out from the middle like the branches of a tree in winter. Mom got upset when the last sheet of wallpaper wrinkled near the ceiling. Dad tried to smooth it out with his fingers, but it just creased more. It's okay, I said. No one will see it all the way up there. Mom wasn't sure. When you do a job, always do it right, she said. Gong Gong told me that when I was four, and he was teaching me to write my name. He said my name was my family. I shouldn't scribble it or any old way, but I was little, and it was hard to make the strokes of the Chinese characters just right. I got this picture in my head of mom at four years old trying to write with a paintbrush full of lumpy wallpaper paste instead of an ink brush. I started to laugh, but I could see Mom didn't think that there was anything funny going on. Helen, my mom said annoyed, go find something else to do. Suddenly, I felt a lump in my throat. Why was Mom in such a bad mood? All because of Gong Gong? Why did he have to come anyways, I cried, and take my room? Mom looked at me in surprise. Then she said quietly, He's my father. It is my duty to take care of him. I didn't want to listen. I ran down the stairs and out the door and down the path towards the railroad tracks. After Gong Gong first tried to speak to us at the airport, he didn't say much to anyone. Cece drew him pictures of flowers and butterflies. He smiled and handed the pictures back. It's for you, said Cece, but Gong Gong didn't understand. So I taped the picture to the door. Then he understood. He nodded and smiled at Cece again. See, he does like it, I told her. One day, Gong Gong read through the Chinese newspaper he had brought with him. Mom tried to get him to go out, but most of the time he shook his head and went back to reading. What will Gong Gong do when he finishes his, all his newspapers, I asked. Give him time, said Mom. He has so many new things to get used to. Since I couldn't see the train from Cece's room, I waited for it out back on the concrete wall. Sometimes I saw Gong Gong looking down at me from my old room. Soon I realized he wasn't looking at me at all. He was waiting for the train. When the engineer waved to me, Gong Gong would reach out and wave back too. Early one morning, I was sitting on the concrete wall waiting for the train when I saw Gong Gong come down the path. He sat down next to me, his legs hanging over the wall, just like mine. We could feel the train coming before we heard the low rumble. Then, there it was. E, R, Sun, Si, Wu, 
Leo, Chi, Ba, said Gong Gong, holding up his fingers for each car that went by. I like the way his voice went up and down with the, each word. The engineer waved from the last car and then the train was out of sight. Gong Gong said the first word again and looked at me waiting. I repeated the word, holding up one finger to match his. E, I said, one. Oh, I got it. Slowly, Gong Gong said the numbers up to eight and I repeated them. We started over and I practiced until I could say each of them by heart. Gong Gong clapped for me. Then I held up my finger and said one. One, Gong Gong repeated after me. Before long, he could count up to eight in English. You did it, I said. Gong Gong took my hand and gave in his and gave them a quick squeeze. I found a small piece of broken concrete and used to write Helen on the wall. Helen, I said, pointing at what I had written. Helen, Gong Gong repeated, tracing the letters with his finger. Then he picked up a piece of concrete and wrote two Chinese characters on the wall. Gong Gong, he said, pointing at the characters. He took my hand and helped me copy his name. Just then, I saw Henry and Cece coming down the path. I've called you a million times, said Henry. Come on, it's time for dinner. Sorry, I said, we didn't hear you. Gong Gong and I were busy. We walked up the path together. E, R, S, N, I said, counting my steps. Four, five, six, Gong Gong said, continuing where I left off. At dinner, Dad told us about a new computer program for learning languages. A friend at work had given him a copy of the Chinese version. Dad said it was great. It starts off real simple, Dad explains. The voice says, Xiao Hai, and then you click a picture of children. Xiao Hai, Gong Gong repeated. He smiled and gave Dad a thumbs up. Then Gong Gong looked at me. Three, Xiao Hai, he said. It was my turn to give him a thumbs up. Hey mom, what was my Chinese name again? I asked. Yin Hua. Mom replied, Gong Gong gave you your name when you were born. Gong Gong, I said, pointing to myself and repeated in Wei. Gong Gong nodded and then pointed to Cece and Henry. In Wen, in Re. Hey, we're all in something. Yes, because you are all in the same family, said mom and you are all the same generation. Cool, said Henry. After my bath that night, I walked to my old room. There was Gon Gon sitting at the desk. I looked over his shoulder. He was writing Helen over and over. Gon Gon, you're writing my name, I said. Gon Gon smiled and motioned for me to sit next to him. He wrote some Chinese characters and said, Hin Huang. Gong Gong handed me a pen and I tried to copy the characters as best I could. I didn't do a very good job, but he showed me how to make the strokes in the right order. I wrote my name again and did much better. Han Hao, Gong Gong said, squeezing my shoulder. That meant very good. Mom always said Han Hao when I brought home my best work from school. Gong Gong stood up and went over to see C's picture on the door. He pointed at the flower and said, Hun. I understood. Hun meant flower. I was Gong Gong's flower. Suddenly, I heard a low rumble. Gong Gong, I said. We looked over quickly and went over to the window. E, R, Sun, Si, Wu, Leo, I counted. Six, said Gong Gong. Six cars, I said. Six cars, Gun Gun repeated slowly. The engineer blew the train's whistle at Gong Gon, and I waved goodnight to him together. The end. Okay, my friends, that's all we have for this story time today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like more activities, see the description below. Otherwise, you can check out our website at cmcleveland.org. 
and we hope to 